Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's find out why you can't drag audio to the timeline. I thought I would do my latest tutorial at my local coffee shop. Just kidding. That's my Bellico photo backdrop. Link in the description for you to get more information. That's not real, but this is. Mm -mm. Okay. First of all, I'm not talking about importing. Let's get that out of the way. This is dragging stuff that's already in the, the project bin to the timeline. Some people think that's importing. It's not. It's dragging stuff to the timeline or just adding clips to the timeline. Um, audio is much more difficult of a format to deal with. Although you think video is and audio is simple, it's not. When you have a project like, like this, in the sequence settings of this project, I have a video format. And that video format is a frame size, pixel aspect ratio, and frame rate. Up there. Anything I put into the, to the video tracks will conform to that format. So if I put in something HD and 4K and vertical and horizontal, and they all are in the timeline, they're all gonna be conformed to that. And that's not the way that audio does. It does when it goes out through the, the mix, which is the main master stereo or multi-track out. But every track, um, each track can have its own file format. And this is where I think people have problems. So let's look at my timeline. I, I created this up, created this specifically to generate problems. So first of all, I made my video um, tracks very, very small. And I've got a music track down here. Let me just make these a little bit bigger. I'm holding the shift key while I'm scrolling around in here. So I've got a format, this is an adaptive format. That's what that number two means. It will adapt to whatever the, the mix track is. So the mix track is stereo, two tracks, this is two. If you have a 32 track mix track, adaptive tracks will change. I highly advise not using adaptive tracks for two reasons. One, they might eventually go away, and they were originally created for archiving formats for companies like uh, BBC and, and CNN, where they wanted to export out all the dialogue, the music, and uh, multiple languages all on separate tracks in case they need to use something in the future and they don't have license for that music, they can easily throw that track away and drop in a new one. So it's an archiving format. That's this one. This next one that has one little um, speaker is a mono track. The next one is called a standard track. There are no stereo tracks in Premiere Pro. A standard track can hold both mono and stereo in one. Then I've got a 5.1 uh, track here, a surround sound track on its own. And I've got some audio clips that I'm gonna drag in. One is surround, another one is mono, another one is stereo, and this orchestral one, if I double click on it, is multiple channels in one file. Now this is a multi-channel music file, but it could just as easily be from a camera. And a lot of professional broadcast cameras record multiple tracks of audio and one video file, and it's all combined into one. Down in the left-hand side, this blue area showed up when I clicked on that. When I had nothing selected and nothing selected here, these are all gray. This is source patching. It's the number one area where people get screwed up. If you can't drag something in, it's usually the source patching that's turned on and off. And it usually happens if you're dragging in a video audio track, that's a video track that has audio linked to it. And one of those two is, uh, is turned off, either the video source patching or the audio source patching. You have, to, if you're bringing in something, you have to have source patching turned on. The way that Premiere Pro works, if I don't have anything turned on, it's going to turn on the highest audio track or the lowest video track. That's why A1 turned on. So if I click on the mono one, it turns on automatically. Again, I'll turn that off with nothing selected. Click on the stereo track. 
Oh, and nothing is selected this time. So here's an example of not being able to bring that in. And I think this is a huge problem. If I go back to the mono, and now it doesn't. Honestly, I think this is a, something Adobe has to address. The first time I clicked on mono, A1 turned on for source patching. When I clicked on stereo, nothing turned on. When I went back to mono, nothing turned on. Yikes. So expect the unexpected. Whatever you think is happening today won't happen tomorrow. You have to be aware of this. If I select the surround sound file, the 5.1 track is selected. I can't even select any of the other tracks. So source patching for 5.1 will only go to other 5.1. Or if you don't have any 5.1, it will make a new track. That's one thing that's interesting. Let me just make these smaller. There's an area below the, the mix track and you can drag anything down here. So if you're having trouble dragging into existing audio tracks, try dragging below everything else and Premiere Pro will make a new audio track based on what the audio track is that you're bringing in. So that's one way to get around it. Make this bigger again. And I am going to start dragging these in. So let's try dragging in the surround one and I'll just drag it in and I, I'm trying to put it on A1. So I can't drag it in there, but I can drag it in to here. So now it's in the, it's in the surround sound track. Or as I mentioned before, you can drag it underneath. So if we make this smaller, I could drag that all the way to the bottom and it's going to make a new track above. Okay, now here's where things get a little tricky. Here's the mono clip. I'm gonna drag it into the adaptive track. Yep, it works. I'll drag it into the mono track. Yep, it works. I'll drag it into the standard track. Yep, it works. This is why a lot of people that work in broadcast and film, they love mono especially for things like dialogue. There is no stereo. There's no need for a dialogue track to be stereo uh, unless there's some kind of spatial reference going on. So just drag, just make your files mono if you have that as an option. Okay, so there they go. That's good. All right, now let's try the, I'm gonna bypass this multi-channel and go to the stereo one. Can we drag this into the adaptive? Yep. Can we drag this into the mono? Yep. Did you just drag a stereo uh, clip into a, a mono track? Yep. <laughs> and to a lot of broadcast people, that freaks them out. Yes, you can hang yourself and do the wrong thing. Just be aware of that. Can we drag that into the standard track? Yes. So the, the, the same thing is working for all of these tracks. Can I drag it into the 5.1 surround? Nope. Can I drag it below everything and create a new track? All right, let's try this. Stereo track down to the bottom. It makes a new track. Okay, that's good. Now let's get back to our multi-channel track. And when I click on this one, remember when I open this up, it has multiple channels. It also has this little plus button down here. So if I click this and we expand it, Premiere Pro created all of the required tracks for me. This drives some people nuts. They want to turn that off and, and you can't. What's happening is, let me undo that and, and bring this in. I'm gonna bring it in over here in a, in a blank area. So when I bring this in over here, you may have to add more tracks as I was showing before. And notice that it made adaptive tracks. Huh? Oh, this one you really gotta be careful. Yes, it made the right amount of tracks, but depending on which one I dragged it to, that's the new track format. So, check this out. I'm gonna drag it into the mono, and then I'll drag it into the, the uh, standard. Watch what happens. Multi-channel into the mono. And what did it make? It made a bunch of mono tracks for me. Undo that. 
multi-channel into the standard and it made a bunch of standard tracks for me. This one could easily mess you up because you feel successful. You dragged it in, you've got your tracks, you move on. And then later on, you're working with mixing and output and you realize, what are these number two on here? How did this adaptive? Or I accidentally made these into stereo tracks or standard tracks and they should have been mono. And no, you can't right click on stuff and just convert it from one format to another. You have to create those tracks and then move them to a track. So let's talk about making new tracks. So if you are creating a new sequence, you go to tracks, here's where you can add your tracks. And just like I showed you, there are standard, 5.1, adaptive, and mono. There's also submix tracks, which we're not going to cover, but these are the file formats. And I could load in from that sequence the formats that I made. Those are the formats that I made. The same thing when you're down in here over on the left and you right click, you have a choice of adding tracks or adding track. If you add track, whatever you have selected. So if I right click on the mono and add track, it's going to add another mono track. If I do that over standard, it adds another standard track. If you choose add tracks, then here you can add as many tracks as you want and they can also be new formats. My recommendation is to create tracks based on what you need in your format and not just willy nilly drag things in and have Premiere Pro make them or you're gonna run into problems like that. What format do you normally work with? If it's stereo, then create a bunch of standard tracks and drag and drop stereo and stay away from mono and adaptive and 5.1. You have more control than, than you think. And remember this little thing over here, this little guy, where are you going to bring your files in and where are they gonna land up? This is source patching. And if you right click inside the right side in the track, you can choose targets, follow inserts and overwrites. So it's going to also do this. This is the track selection and that's source patching. So if I wanted to have more control, I could double click on that mono track, put it in here, and I could pick a specific track like this track, jump back to the source monitor, so I want it into here, so I'll push this button insert and it's going to insert it. So this is just a different way rather than dragging and dropping, but it's really, really specific. You pick the file, you double clicked it, loaded in the source, you hit the source uh, uh, patching and now it goes to that track. You're having more control. So these are some of the ways that you can fix dragging audio problems in. Now, if you're trying to drag audio into the video uh, part, that's this stuff up here where video is, you're not gonna drag it into there. And if you're trying to drag um, audio in or video into the audio or audio into video, that's not. So the area of where you're dragging is important. Um, but source patching, having the right formats and understanding that, and this is not importing. Importing is when you're, when you're bringing it into Premiere Pro. This is just adding stuff to the timeline. This is editing, not importing. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop, or you can donate once or monthly like our wonderful donors. We really do appreciate all of the uh, amazing support you give us. And I'm going to take some time and enjoy my latte in my uh, little coffee shop here. Thank you, Bellico, for this amazing backdrop. And thanks so much to my brother Dave and his wife Rose for playing the part of the customer and barista. Oh man, it's uh, fun stuff. Anyway, getting back to these file formats, it's my job to uh, read some of the, the murmurings going out there of people having some problems with uh, things like audio formats. Break this down into a very detailed um, why something works and let you know how you can be more successful and you can be more in control of your audio formats in Adobe Premiere Pro.